Right, well, another thing has arrived for the ambulance just before Christmas. I'm not sure when this video will be out. Um, whether it be before or after Christmas depends what happens. Anyway, this is a um, Phoenix Pure Sign in Wave Inverter um, from Victron. It's about a 500 VA, which if your power factor is perfect is about 500 watts. This is this is entire job is going to be to run my wife's CPAP, um, and it pulls on start up and warm up uh, around about 560 watts. So it'll put it into the 300, the 30 minute overload period for this. Um, we generally find if we put a bit of warm water in there, um, it doesn't need to heat up anywhere near as quick. So generally that drops it back to about 1.1 amp at 240 volts, which is uh, about 260, 270 watts, somewhere about there. Um, so this should do the job, but we've got to mount it. Um, I haven't got bus bars or anything yet. I did find some heavy cable. Um, but I'm just going to put a couple of clips on it so we can test run this over the Christmas period and then once Rego's done and ownership and everything's all transferred and everything then we'll, we'll do we'll spend some more money on this thing. Uh, but in the meantime I may have to deal with like stamp duties and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm saving a bit of my money at the moment. I already spent five grand on this thing and I've had to pull another five out. Because um, yeah it's just expensive stuff. Anyway. Let's go around to the, uh, the, what I call the battery bay, which um, some of you got confused with me referring to the space where you keep the batteries. Uh, in this, there's a sliding battery bay or, or sliding battery rack, and there is a bay above it where the suction pump used to go that is hermetically isolated from the batteries. And they're sealed AGMs anyway, so you're not really going to gas off and explode unless they pop a vent. And unless something crazy happens, that shouldn't be the case. Anyway, let's uh, go around to that bay. All right, so our batteries are stored in that compartment down there. And the stuff we want to install is in this bay here. However, it's been filled up with junk during the repair phase. So I think I'm going to uh, evict some of this stuff and put it somewhere else. And um, yeah, then we'll get this guy in here somewhere, which should just fit. <laughs> there you go, it's installed. Now we'd better do this properly. All right, let me find some screws and stuff. Okay, so like every other part of this thing, it's had a bit of water, a bit of dust and grease and oil over the years in here. Some of this might be compressor oil that got loose in here and the dirt stuck to it. Either way, this bay needs a clean out. So before I start putting my sensitive electronics in here and mains voltage, I'm going to give it a clean out. So I'm going to get some spray and wipe and some rags and see what we can do. All right, well, things aren't anywhere near perfect, but they're certainly a lot cleaner than they were. I'm not getting grease and oil on my hands working in here. Um, I can probably get a bit of that with a moist rag later on. And up inside and on the roof of the box, probably need a bit of a wipe down, but we'll get to that later. The hard stuff's done anyway. Um, at some point, I will pull up this plate here, which used to hold the suction pump. That'll come out. I'll clean underneath that, and I'll find what's under there as well. Um, this is my 24 volt to 24 volt DC to DC converter, made by Red Arc. This is what used to run the suction pump. So it's a bunch of 2N3055s, um, I think four of them in parallel, uh, providing about 10 amps, which is about all I need for the 12 volt stuff. So let's get some stuff mounted on the wall in here, and um, I'm going to use some Robertson chipboard screws because this is all fiberglass, and there is about that much gap there that I've got, um, and I've checked that the cable gantries work their way up through here instead of right where I want to put the screws, so I'm not likely to drill through wiring if i draw through the air conditioning line i don't really care that's going to come out anyway uh, but i don't really want a face full of freon that could cause me some unexpected side effects so let's get this uh, inverter in and the charger which is wired to this bit here that's going to get put up that side as well vertically so that the convection cooling works so uh, let's go and put them in all right so i've got the battery charger with two screws in i'll put more in in a minute I thought I'd stop to pay attention here. When you're drilling into fiberglass or plastics, set your clutch setting very, very low. Oh, and we have a resident apprentice. You've come to help. Uh, you spot the ambulance open, didn't you? Yeah, it's your favorite spot right now. Just don't kick that cable behind you too hard. That's the rear view camera cable. We have to install that properly one day. 
All right, apprentice, I'm gonna get on with uh, putting stuff in here. All right, we've got charger and inverter mounted. We have a right angle plug to a power board hiding away in here. And it's the most unruly cable ever, probably because it's uh, got a lot of plastic and not a lot of copper. And it won't freaking stay where I fucking tell it to. All right, so I've got just enough cable to run up to our connectors in here. And we've probably got just enough cable under here if I can find it. Where did you go, cable? There we go. Probably just enough cable here to come out when the thing is, when the drawer is pulled out. So, um, I think we'll connect this end up first and push any extra slack through we have. This just happens to be the only length of this cable I had left. Um, for the short term, I'm going to be fitting clips to this other end until I get proper bus bars and everything set up in here. Um, now, for you who are worried about fusing and stuff, um, what I do eventually intend to do, uh, when it arrives, I have a big mil spec plug coming. Um, I can hook it through this system, which I've got the 150 amp or 100 amp breaker here, um, and my voltmeter and everything like that. That's the isolation switch for the 24 volt system. Um, all inside the cabin, there are 24 volt sockets for stuff, um, and they all go through that system. And there is one, just below this I think where does it go um, one of them uh, comes through the gap in here and it's got it's been blinded off so with luck I should be able to plug the inverter through that system and have it fused but for the moment I'm gonna put some clips on it till we discover what works and what doesn't and I'm not sure if this is gonna be a permanent fixture we don't know if it's gonna work with a CPAP it's one of those machines that has such a variable range of current use uh, that it's hard to pick and I think much of a bigger inverter probably wouldn't fit in this box um, Also at some point we will be putting some ventilation in I'll be probably putting a fan in here um, To draw air in and maybe out I might 3d print a duct so that we um, Push cool air in the bottom and draw warm air out of the top out from under this lip um, We'll do something fancy with it in the meantime while the weather's clear. I can leave this door open um, And that will solve that problem uh, but you know, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get to it For the moment I need to get this set up and because we're going to test this at some point in the very near future, so um, All right, let's get some wiring up and we'll see what happens All right, so I'm not sure if the camera angle is going to capture all of this or my voice, but we'll try um, I'm gonna see if we can get a bit of this stuff split out from here. One thing I do like about this Victron stuff and also the brand of battery I've got is that they're very clear about their markings it's pretty hard not to get red to red and black to black I think that should be enough but I don't know now let's um, do our terminal this is an insulated screwdriver by the way made for doing mains voltage but fits these terminals perfectly now I think that's as low as it goes yeah we'll put a little bit of this back up through here first and we'll pull our slack through as needed. All right. This is definitely some thick copper. It's about as big as these terminals will take, which makes me happy. Voltage drop's probably not going to be an issue. And we're less than a meter on it. So I probably will need to put a fuse back at the battery at some stage. Okay. Let's see if our negative wire goes in that's not perfectly in there but it's gonna gonna have to do for the moment um, I just none of, neither of those strands are crossing over but we'll give that a bit of a clean up in a minute it's not a perfect connection we're gonna get a lot of my stuff it isn't quite perfect and a lot of you guys in the comments notify me of that um, I was gonna chop these off but I might be able to just tuck them in a little bit for now that's good, that's the negative anyway, that's not as dangerous as the others. Alright, now we're going to try and push these down as much as we can because we're working on a piece of cable I found in the shed and I need as much of that as I can. At some point I will go and buy another roll of this stuff which is about $400 for this cable. Um, it's about 6 mil. Now there is an earth terminal here. Um, we're in a fiberglass chassis. Um, and nothing is grounded. There's no real way to ground them. So 
for the time being I'm probably going to leave that disconnected um, until I find I, I might there is a metal shelf up above this I may ground the metal shelf to this because that's where we're going to be using the mains device it does have a little bit of water however it's double insulated so um, it might be that this ends up being one giant double insulated appliance but anyway um, now some of this wiring camera's sort of over here this wiring here was like this when it came with me and the tape was already hanging off and just stupid joiners that's going to get cleaned up I'm going to put proper junction blocks and terminal strips and bus bars and everything in here uh, and all that will get sorted out and cleaned out I'll have a separate fuse box just for the 12 volt stuff but uh, anyway I need to find some clips for this um, and so we can clip it onto the 24 volt and see if it works I'm gonna guess it does because it's brand new okay so we're looking down at the battery bay now and we're gonna pull our batteries out and let's see if our lead will actually reach it's gonna be a smidge and short that's irritating <laughs> um, now I did find a pair of crimp terminals I like to solder those things on but I found my good crimpers so might be the easier way to go um, thinking I might have to buy a couple of leads for this uh, I'd be careful about my money at the moment I'm running on a limit how are we gonna do this yeah all right um let's see does that come through i could potentially put another hole in here and that might bring the cable a bit closer <sighs> yeah that is certainly not going to reach until i get my battery's about halfway in and even then it won't reach until it's all the way in so yeah i'm definitely going to need to extend that um I might put a couple of terminals on this length of cable. Oh, I got a bit of a 24 volt twitch off that. Um, I might um, put terminals on this and then when I meet my old man, who I think has the other half of this roll of cable, um, we might hit him up for a bit more cable and make an extender. Not ideal, but it might work. That or I've got some Anderson cable somewhere. Actually, I know where I've got some cable. I made an experimental extension socket for my Argo. And I made use big heavy cable for that. Um, I'll go see what's on that. All right, I found this. I got loads of heavy cable, two Anderson plugs, and I'm not going to need this till way after Christmas, or possibly ever. It was a bit of an experiment. So I can probably chop that in half and have an Anderson plug up here so I can actually disconnect it or reconnect stuff. I think that's a sensible way to go. So I might disconnect those cables this might be a bit much copper to shove in there but I know we'll see how we go um yeah we'll hook this up and put an Anderson plug up top that makes life a lot easier for me actually right let's get cracking with that now I've um, clipped the wires and I thought I'd just compare the size of the copper in these two cables um it's a bit hard to do but this has probably got about 50 percent more copper in here these are were basically jumper leads for my Argo so um, yeah, now we're going to push this cable out, the one that I just went to all the trouble to get in. Oh, Alright, we'll be back once I've got this cable out and the other one's in. Alright, so that hole's not big enough to get the cables through, so I thought about drilling another hole and I thought, you know what, good time to rip that aluminium plate out. And yes, it's dirty as blazes underneath, so we've ripped that out and it had mounting holes or mounting bolts that went all the way through so I might be able to reuse one of these holes if they go all the way through there was a bit of water under it but this should also make a water drain hole which would be very nice even though you're showing some of the timber that's under this as well anyway we're gonna get this cleaned up we'll put our inverter back on and we'll put our wires through all right so the plates out everything's clean and I've got this drill bit here which is a tiny smidgen longer or bigger than the hole that's already in there I reckon that should accommodate for some extra stuff. Um, actually, before I start drilling, stick my hand underneath and make sure, yes, it is clean. There's the cables there. So right next to that is clear of dangerous stuff to drill through. And uh, now I realize that the, <laughs> the 
the DC to DC converters in the way of the drill. Uh, all right, I've got to pull that off the wall as well. All right, DC to DC is out of the way. Let's get ourselves a hole happening. Let's go here. Yeah. This is going to be fun. run up against something in there. It could be aluminium. This is a wood bit. We'll see how we go. You know what? I might put a bigger drill bit through and just put a big drill bit that might be enough. And that might miss the aluminium. Alright, back in a sec. Alright, so this is as big as I've got. Uh, I think this is about a 10 or a 12 mil. It should be just enough to get the wires through. I hope. Stand on something, I think I'm gonna need low speed, low speed high drag. If I can get this clutch disengaged. All right. All right, now, low speed. Let's try this one. Yeah, well, spun my camera around. So yeah, there was definitely a piece of aluminium in there. That's why I wasn't making any headway. Now let's hope that this drill bit is enough. Um, and it was a 10 mil. All right, um, we're gonna bring wires up from the bottom. See how we go. There's a hole right there with a tremendous big burr on it. I might deburr that first. Hang on a minute. All right, let's see if I can get a cable up in here. All right, there's one. Yeah. Um, Number two. Oh, it's just too small. All right, I'm gonna go in the shed, see if I gotta find a bigger drill bit. All right, so I found this one that's marked HSS for high speed steel. It looks bigger than the other one. It feels bigger than the other one. But I don't know how big it is. Well, I've definitely gotta advance the drill chuck a bit. Let's see if this does the job. I probably shouldn't have done that. Now I've got metal filings in my inverter. Give me a second while I blow them out. All right, so inverter's out of the way. I'm gonna get some wires in this time. Let's see. There's our hole somewhere there. Got my finger on the other side. There's that one, come back from that. You're right there. There's that one. All right. Smidge and bigger, we might just squeeze her in. Haha, -ha. success! All right, now, now's when I realize I'm S A M R T, smart, and these need to go in this way. Yep, that's better. Okay, now we want you through a little bit more. Leave our Anderson plug in here. Now that means I can disconnect directly from the batteries and be 100% sure nothing's going to connect. And I can put a dummy Anderson on here to insulate that. Um, and at some point I'll be putting a main fuse on that as well. Um, I don't have one handy right at the moment. Um, so I am taking a bit of a risk, but I will tape that up when not in use. All right, um, let's do the battery terminals now. battery bay out a bit okay so we should have loads of cable now now I've got to find the two terminals I had these guys oh I might have too much copper for them I might have to see if I've got bigger ones I might have to go buy bigger ones uh, all right and I've already got battery charger hooked up here as well so I guess I can probably 
once I've got that Anderson plug in there, I can probably run most of the stuff off the Anderson. Anyway, for the moment, I'm going to slap two sets of terminals in here. Um, if I've got enough bolt head left, I may or may not, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, so as I thought, <laughs> well, these ones are going to fit okay. Um, this guy won't. Maybe I've got one of the bigger ones in there. Anyway, I'll get the rest of these stripped and we'll go from there. Let's have a look. All right. Yep. Well, they're probably just about perfect size for them. Um, all right. Let's find another bigger terminal. So what do you know? I found another one in my collection. All right. So these probably call for a bit of heat shrink too. Um, yeah, all right. Um, I'll get them done on and then I'll put the heat shrink on afterwards. I know most people would put heat shrink on first. I'm gonna do things a little backwards because of just where I happen to be at the moment. I need to get these guys trimmed a bit shorter. All right, a bit snuffly, still got a bit of hay fever. I'm keeping away from people as you do in COVID-19 era. Have been tested again and come back negative again. So I know I don't have COVID. It'd be highly unlikely where I am at the moment, but it's the right thing to do anyway. All right, get a terminal on here. Nope, I got a couple of strands loose. Let's see if we can get this on nicely this time. Oh, sorry about the sniffles on camera, guys. It's woefully humid at the moment. So let's start with you guys. Not too big. Let's hope I don't short things out by dropping a tool across the spanner. Let's grab you. Alright, now. Oh, wow, these things are always take a lot of force. We'll be back when I get a camera in a better position. Alright, so the crimpers couldn't crimp them tight enough, so I soldered them, and I was at a heat shrink of the right size, so I've used insulation tape, but of the correct um, colour. So, sends up my apprentice needs my help to spray with some repellent, I'll sort her out, and we'll get these terminals off and get them on. Let's get our 14 again and do it. These good little Barco ratchets are some bloody magic. Set of three of them for about a hundred bucks, and you've got everything from eight to nineteen mil in three spanners in a nice little pouch. All right, that one's on nice and firm. Negative is going to be a different ball game, and yes, the body here is fiberglass, so I'm not going to short anything out. And uh, this little screw here is not grounded to anything; it's just the frame to hold it down. This is the bit I'm a little skeptical about. There's already three terminals on here, so I don't know if we'll have enough to get it in here i might forego the spring washer which is probably not recommended but um all is fair and loving war machines all right yeah this is why i need a bus bar so yeah we'll be certainly putting a bus bar in here in the near future where's our 14. do up feels like i'm undoing I am undoing. Again, I'm going to have to go inside and find some tissues and stuff, I think. Alright. And there are flies and mozzies everywhere. Alright, that's nice and firmly on there. Alright, we're only missing one spring washer. Alright, this I'm going to have to come back to and do all of this properly in the very near future. Um, but I'm going to get some zip ties, zip tie this together, but tissues first. All right, so keep in mind guys, this is all a temporary arrangement. This is all gonna get rejigged when I get a bit more money in here. I've got another five grand coming to dedicate to this project. And uh, when that gets here, we'll be buying the proper stuff and putting a big fat fuse right down on the batteries here and doing this properly. But it's Christmas, everything's starting to close, so Need to get this to an acceptable state that is semi-safe for the time being. It will require a little bit of intelligence and it won't be as idiot-proof as some systems, but 
there are fuses in this circuit I'm making sure of it just not down here so this vehicle's not going very far it's going to get its final roadie uh, or its final inspection for its roadworthy and it's going across town um, for a night and after that I've got to wait for well the previous owner's been nice enough to hold the registration open for me for a bit so I can't exploit that too much um, I will be transferring it all over in a minute and there's my apprentice okay well it's probably time for a bit of a clean up test if our lid goes back on this lid I'm going to need to do a bit of refiberglassing on at some point too oh. alright now I have all the screws saved in here um, a couple of washers to go over that um, I think that's the biggest one I've got there oh that one's going to fall straight through well I mostly want something to stop this going on I've got a couple of wing nuts here from battery terminals that just fit these and I mean just now the studs turning I'll fix that later um, this guy should fit okay now my apprentice is playing with switches when she shouldn't in there hang on a minute all right this is a bit of a difficult spot to uh, film from but moment of truth just double check that we've got red and red and everything to the right place so big zap i think there's a capacitor let's see if she turns on no all right should have checked the battery side let's see if we got something backwards all right my alarm went off as soon as i started filming all right so battery polarity and everything is correct so let's try again no big zap this time um i can't see ah power's on just took a little bit to boot up it's got a smart cycle seems like my apprentice is upset about something so might have been because i told her off for flicking the switches when she shouldn't anyway let's um go and find something to test this out with all right so the apprentice kind of moved in here while i was out there and uh, messed everything up but let's see we've got power lights showing up um and we have a fan here we can plug in and try with it um let's see if this works um We have mains. Oh, that's nice. And this humidity, I can definitely appreciate some decent fan movement. So that's working very well. At some point, I will come up with a. Excuse uh, my brain's not working right now. I've done about as much as I can do in a day. Uh, multiple sclerosis saps the energy out of me, especially in the heat and the humidity. Um, and I've done about my three and a half or four hours for the day. I'm shagged. Anyway, um, inverter works. It's good. Now I can uh, pack a few key things back in that socket and pack the other ones somewhere else. There's heaps of storage in here, so I'll find a spot for them. Anyway, we'll be back in a bit. All right, so that's the end of this little project. Got the inverter in got the charger in now I can run the charger while the inverter's running it'll put a good 16 amps in it's not really getting that warm inverters okay on that load looks like things are gonna work okay so yeah I can run the next step will be to uh, probably enlarge this gap a little bit so that I can close the door with a lead out of it uh, or put a caravan point on here um, I'm not sure which way I'll go about that um, yeah, well, we'll find a way where it works and it keeps it watertight. <clears throat> anyway, I've got flies trying to fly down my throat. So I've cleaned up all the chaos that was on the ground there. Um, so now I've got to get back in here and clean up all the chaos in here. Uh, bought myself a big pile of maintenance and cleaning, didn't I? Anyway, um, that fan is still running off the inverter. Doing quite well, so... I may even pack a couple of things away and I'm gonna have a lay down in here and cool off. So, um, yeah, another short little video, although I don't know how long this is by this point. 
but it's another ambulance video so uh yeah you guys seem to be liking it and some people have been seeking out ambulance related or parenti ambulance related videos so i'm going to keep doing a few of these and we'll do some more of the argo sometime soon and really whatever life throws at me there's a lot of stuff at the moment tomorrow is my next infusion day so and it's also final inspection for the roadworthy on this so we'll probably take this to get the roadie uh, and provided that goes through we'll go and get my infusion and i can have a snooze in the back of this before we come home because i'm usually screwed after the infusion so yeah anyway see you in the next one hope it was fun see you next time